Thank you. My name is Marianne Thieme and I'm a member of parliament for the Party for the Animals in the Netherlands. And our party is the very first in the world to champion the rights of non-humans in a national parliament. However, there are other problems in the world aside from animal welfare. So tonight I'm going to tell you some very hard truths about what we are doing to our planet. And I'm so pleased that you are ready to face up to these realities. If you look at the 10 hottest years ever measured, they've all occurred in the last 14 years. The world is heating up fast and we have ourselves to blame. Global warming is real and we humans are almost certainly the cause. Global warming, that's the world's greatest current concern. Everyone finds themselves in his grip from scientists to politicians to the Secretary General of the UN and even Leonardo DiCaprio. We face a convergence of crises. Industrial civilization has caused irreparable damage. By the middle of the century, there may be 150 million environmental refugees. Not only is it the 11th hour, it's 11.59. But it's that other film made by Nobel Prize winner Al Gore, which has truly succeeded in putting this global problem on the map. An inconvenient truth was a real wake-up call to the world. This was a great achievement for Al Gore. However, he forgot something rather important. The consequences of global warming are enormous. The climate researchers from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change have estimated that by the year 2100, one to three billion people will be in dire need of fresh water. Hunger will increase throughout large parts of the globe. So, it should come as no surprise that global warming is currently our foremost concern. Everyone who has seen Al Gore's film knows that our Earth is in bad shape. Greenhouse gas emissions must be reduced. This is on the agenda of every world leader. The causes of global warming must be dealt with now. And so, together we must identify the greatest emitters of greenhouse gases in our society. What do you think? What are the sources of greenhouse gases? The cars we're driving and the water waste and all the trash we don't care where we're throwing it. That's what I think. Cars, buses. It's industry, it's gasoline, it's energy use. All the fumes from car. Cars, too many vehicles maybe. Fumes in the air, all the gas and people driving in the city. Cars, factories. Planes. Imagine the aviation industry hasn't helped. I mean, one airplane can fly across country and it's like 40 tons of, of carbon. 40 tons, that's a lot. I think in one word I would say pollution. Coal power stations, gas power stations. People using more energy than they need to. We are wasting a lot. Of An excessive use of, of gases. And also coal burning stations, especially in China. All the pollutants that we pump into the air day after day. Everyone says the same thing. It's the cars, the planes, the industrial plants. It's because we leave our lights on and take long showers. Always the same familiar answers. And, well, yes, of course it's true. But no one has yet won the grand prize. Because we're forgetting one extremely important factor. 18% of global greenhouse gas emissions are caused by livestock farming. That might surprise you. Farmed animals, 18%. And guess what percentage of total global emissions are caused by transport? 13%. Just think. All the cars, tractors, trucks, ships and planes in the world added together emit fewer greenhouse gases than livestock farming. Oh, really? Wow, I thought it was mostly cars. 
Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Livestock. That's crazy. So more than the cars. Are you serious? Yeah, I didn't know that. That's insane. No, I did not know that. No. Uh, that's news to me. I've never heard that. I'd never heard the livestock connection, no. Well, I knew there was some. I had no idea it was that extensive. How does it come from livestock exactly? What do you call cow farts? <laughs> what do you call that? Okay. Yeah, the methane gas coming from the cows. Yeah. It's cow shit, right? Doesn't cow poop? It's the, what the emissions, right? I thought it was just fat people in the south here in America, but no, apparently it's cattle as well. It's quite worrying. <laughs> okay. But I saw an article that say uh, because the cow, what they fast, mm -hmm. and then actually the fasting make the global warming. <laughs> That's <laughs> <hard>. yeah. <laughs> but how how can it be that farm animals plays a heavier burden on the environment than the entire transport sector worldwide? Well, actually, it's rather simple. Once upon a time, a farmer was someone who owned land and some animals. Nice and quiet around here. If there was more land, then he bought some more pigs, a few chickens, and some cows. Well, that's a fine kettle of fish. You know what? All that grubbing around outside takes far too long. We're going to fatten you up and fast. It's not a fairy tale storybook. You're there to be eaten. Oh, uh, not sure that's such a compliment, really. We'll squeeze you all together nice and efficiently, and you'll all get sick right away. You're telling me. Listen, Piggy, I'm not interested in your personal vision right now. In the Netherlands alone, you lot produce 70 billion kilos of dung. Do you know how bad that is for the environment and the climate? Uh, sorry for living. Did you know that cows of all farm animals are the largest producers of greenhouse gases, mostly through all that belching and farting? Do you know what the problem is? You're eating us out of house and home. Who was just so pleased about fattening us up? But all that food has to come from somewhere, doesn't it? So, we destroy the rainforests and plant soya crops instead. But the rainforests are really important for the absorption of carbon dioxide. And then we spray the stuff with pesticides and we ship the soya off to Europe where it ends up in your feeding troughs. So well organized. What are you people up to? Oh, oh. Well, that's not our fault. <laughs> Who actually wants to eat meat anyway? The consumer, okay? Is there something wrong with that? Well, that's a good question. Who actually eats so much meat? Eating meat is a luxury that we've got all rather too used to. Don't dare touch our steaks. Keep your hands off our barbecues. But once it becomes clear that all this meat is making a major contribution to the destruction of our Earth. Shouldn't we think again? And yes, I hear some of you thinking, here we go again, yet another vegetarian fanatic. But I'm certainly not the only one who's worried about this issue. 